Hi guys, welcome back. There's a lot to unpack. I wasn't gonna do this video at first because one thing about me, I have zero tolerance for liars. I don't have the patience for BS. I don't entertain it. I don't tolerate it. That's just my personality. And my discernment is all the way up through the roof. That's why I have a zero tolerance personality, I guess, attitude, I guess. So before we get started, I just want to remind people that this thing is bigger than Diddy. You see, a lot of people, before this Diddy situation, they thought this world was all peaches and roses, right? Or peaches and cream. This world is not as it seems. Nothing in this world, nothing in this industry is as it seems. So because you can't wrap your mind around the evil of this world, so you dismiss it because you can't wrap your mind around the evil and everything that's going on in this world. So you live in a bubble and you're doing yourself a disservice when you do that because you see, this thing is nothing new. So when I say that this is bigger than Diddy, it's because it is. This is a global international network there's a world that the public has no idea about and is darker than you can ever imagine people have to realize that it is part of their religion to harm children to ritually abuse little children and babies they do abort <clears throat> rituals, you know, when you are alive or get rid of, you know, that's why they back that bill so hard. It's their religion. They have their own religion. Freemasonry is their religion. These people are Luciferians. Also, they make contracts with high level demonic spirits those contracts are between the spiritual world the physical world and the physical beings it's a dark dark practice and it involves blood ritual xex ritual blood magic sex magic um underground child trafficking breeding for sacrifice or let's just say it's dark very very dark and it's far worse than what's being reported it's far worse than what people are talking about so yeah that's why some people they choose not to believe they rather stay in a little bubble and pretend since they can't wrap their mind around it then it just can't be true since their little mind can't handle it they'd rather just say oh no and dismiss what's going on in this world and you must question everything and remember it's a global it's an international network that uses kids to blackmail people okay your politicians are compromised these artists are compromised a lot of people are compromised so that's why my message has always been stop supporting these artists financially because you are really helping the system you are helping to keep that evil machine going so the best way to expose these organizations is by spreading the information you know when you shed light into darkness they lose power these people will lose their power so yeah knowledge is power and these people are banking on your ignorance your ignorance give them authority to do these things and you know everything within the system 
operates off of authorities. So let's continue to expose these people, these demons. So with all that said, I wasn't going to do a video of, on this because again, I have zero tolerance for liars. And right away, I knew right away this girl was a liar. There was a video that came down my timeline about the Jane Doe and then the picture of this Misha person. And I was like, whoa, like right away, I was like, whoa, this is the real Jane Doe? So this is the person that in the lawsuit, her face was covered. And I was like, this is very drastic. In my mind, I'm like, this is a drastic change because in the lawsuit, the chain doe was very light skin and she was slim. So when I saw the icon picture of Misha, the alleged Jane Doe, I was like, okay, hmm. But I did not click because again, I have zero tolerance for BS, lies. So I was just like, whatever, it's not gonna make me click on it. So then, I saw another video come down my timeline and that one had me mm, like, okay, what is going on? But I didn't click on it. It's until the next day, I saw the YouTuber who interviewed Misha. I believe his name is Lino B. I've never heard of him until now. And he was on a platform that I'm subscribed to, Planet Something. So when it came down my timeline and I'm like, uh, what, what? I saw, I read the title. I'm like, oh, what's going on? So I was like, oh, let me click on it real quick. And I did. And that's when I'm like, oh, okay. I'm going to have to check it out. The video, the interview. See, I didn't see any big media outlets revealing this girl. So when I saw it only on YouTube coming down my timeline, I didn't really care to click on these videos because it's just like, okay, like, I don't know. I just did not care enough to click on this so-called chain door has been revealed. So, okay. So anyway, so when I click on that YouTuber's video that I'm subscribed to that had the this Lino B person on there, that's when I was like, oh, Hmm, okay, let me check out this interview. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so when I went to their channel to check out the interview, as I said, right away, when I first saw the icon of the girl, I was like, okay, this is a drastic change from the girl in the lawsuit who is light-skinned, tanned, and slim. And then this Misha girl is dark skin and overweight. I'm just being honest. So going in, I was already like, hmm. So I press play and right away, right away her bad acting, I was just like, okay. She confirmed it right away when she was like, I don't know how my picture got out there. Who got my picture? Who put my face out there? How did they get my pictures? And I'm just like, what? Wait, what? And it was just bad acting. I'm like, how did your picture get out there? You asking, how did your picture get out there? Um, You do know the pictures are in a real lawsuit. A lawsuit that was filed by Cassie's lawyer, Douglas Wigdor, who I contacted on Tuesday by the way, I will let you guys know about it in a minute. So let me back up a little. This video is about two alleged Diddy victims. One of the women name is Adria English. I did a video of her lawsuit a few months ago. So Adria English is a ex-porn star, a stripper. So she did attend Diddy parties. Okay, now she's not coming off as a victim. She's coming off as a willing participant. 
Now, I haven't watched any of Adria's YouTube interviews, but I do know that her lawyer, Ariel, what's her name? Ariel Mitchell. Yes, Ariel Mitchell Kid, her lawyer dropped her as a client, claiming that Adria is just, I guess, her stories are just not adding up and she's just whatever. The point is the lawyer dropped Adria from the case. She didn't want to represent Adria anymore. Okay? So this video is not going to focus on Adria because I did not watch any of her YouTube interviews. Plus, she has proof that she was around Diddy. She attended these parties. So that's why she's not the focus. Now, Misha, LaMisha is the one I'm going to expose. I'm going to point out some of her lies. And remember, Adria is the one who brought out Misha. So back to the interview. So right away, I'm like, okay, this girl is a liar. She's not the girl in the lawsuit, in the pictures. She's not the Jane Doe because her acting was so bad, you guys. The minute she was freaking out in the interview, like, who got my picture? Who put my picture out there? How did they get my picture? I was like, okay, this is an ish show. It's an ish show. S-H-I-T, show. So let me also add this. I'm very sensitive to abuse, victims, people crying. It, it, it touches me a lot. Like, I'll start crying too, okay? So when Lamisha was doing all of that, I promise you, I didn't, there was no tears from me. There were no, because the things that she was saying, I mean, those are things are true. They are victims who been through these things that she was talking about. It's just that her story did not move me because I knew she was lying. And I'm someone who's like a crybaby. I'm crying like I'm always crying. <laughs> I promise you, I'm always crying for someone. Always crying for someone. And I'm always praying while I'm crying for someone. So I'm very sensitive to matters like this. I really am. So Misha, while she was doing all of the fake crying, and let me tell you, like, how do you fake cry? Like, how are you speaking? And then the very next second, she's like, oh, she's speaking in tongues. That's what she calls it. She'll say one little sentence, and the next thing, she's speaking in tongues. I'm not kidding you. I wish I could play a clip of it, but this YouTuber who interviewed her has it where other YouTubers cannot play any parts of the interview. It's, it's silly. But yeah, it was bad acting, and that is not how speaking in tongues work. Okay, so I'm trying to see if I should break this all down or should i just point out a few of her lies i will say this she could very well be a victim it's just that she's not diddy's victim she's not this jane doe she's just not this jane doe now because she said that she was m-worded when she was younger okay so she is a victim of that but as far as this Diddy situation, I don't think so. And it's sad because Diddy has done a lot of wicked things, a lot of evil things. There's so many victims that people don't need to go and make up lies on him. He has done so much. We shouldn't believe lies because he's done so much to people that his track record says it all. There are so many real victims. We don't have to believe fake victims. And I said this. I said there will be real victims and there will be pretenders, liars involved. And LaMisha, Misha, whatever, is the first liar in this case. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to round down some of the things that she said in the interviews because I did take notes. I took notes on Monday when I watched the interview and I'm going to point out her lies. 
and I'm also going to point out some things in the real lawsuit, the real Jandol's lawsuit. So bear with me, okay? Lamisha said she was in sixth grade when she met Diddy. She was 10 years old when she met Diddy. She was writing music for Diddy. Pierre Harvey, she kept calling him Pierre Harvey, but the guy name is Harvey Pierre. Harvey Pierre uh, works for Diddy. He's also being sued by a few victims for sexual assault as well. So he has his own thing going on. So Harvey would stop by and pay Lamisha for her lyrics. And he told her that Diddy wanted to meet her and wanted her to come to his flavor camp for 48 hours. Now, we've heard this 48 hours thing before, right? Remember the video of Diddy when he was with Justin Bieber and he said, I have Justin for 48 hours and we are going to go buck wild. Remember that? And one thing that Lamisha does, she'll take things from the public and add it into her story to make her story sound believable. And she does that a lot, and I'm going to point them out. So Harvey asked her to, you know, ask her grandma if she could go. She did, but her grandmother said no. Her mother was on drugs and wasn't around. So Harvey promised that they would take her to find her mother. And when they picked her up, she was expecting Diddy to be outside, but Harvey was outside, but Lamisha was skeptical to get in the car. So Harvey had to call and get Diddy on the phone. Once she heard Diddy's voice, that's when she got in the car. When she got in the car, Harvey kept telling her to eat the candy and she said it tasted nasty and he just kept forcing her to eat the candy. <laughs> and, um, she started spitting it out and she tried getting out the car but harvey slammed the door and drove off with her next thing she remember is being on a private jet they put her on a private jet and they said to her damn this beat is heavy and <laughs> that's what i mean by she'll add unnecessary details unnecessary things to her story to make it sound believable but instead it just raises red flags. So after she said that in the interview, they were like, damn, this B is heavy. People were like, wait a second. You, this girl, the real Jane Doe is slim. So there's no way they would say, damn, this B is heavy since the real Jane Doe is slim. So in the new interview that she did on another platform, I'm going to talk about that in a second, she made sure to add that, oh, when they said I was heavy, it's because they meant, ah, oh, I was heavy from being a dead weight from all the D-R-U-G'd, whatever, okay? Okay, so she said she saw Talia Graves being, I'm going to say all worded Talia Graves is the Diddy victim who's being repped by Gloria all red i did a video on her as well her lawsuit and she you know she went live she went live with gloria and she was the one that was crying yeah so so this L lamisha says she saw talia Grace being you know all word another thing with lamisha i noticed she doesn't use the as a victim she doesn't use like the word all word she'll say like they were getting effed like when she mentioned her friend adria english she said she saw adria getting effed on the corner and she was drooling like ooh. she did all that like ooh. and i'm like see the unnecessary details even reenacting the sound effects is just yeah red flags because a real victim is not going to mock or mimic you know so um so yeah so she was like i saw adria getting f as a victim you're not gonna use the word f you're gonna say she was being all worded or i was being all worded but she doesn't say that she used the word f but remember 
when she was telling her story that when she was younger, she said the proper term. She says she was molested by a family member. Okay, so you notice the the difference. She said she was molested when she was younger by a family member. So that part of her story, I believe, but everything else, no, because victim is not going to say they were getting F when they are getting R worded. They're not gonna say they were getting F when things are being done to you against your will. It's all worded. It's all wording. It's not you being F. Okay, so that was just like weird to me. You know, there's a difference. She used a proper term when she said she was molested, but all these other things, she did not use the proper term. She used the proper term when she was molested because that really did happen. When you are really outwarded or sexual assaulted, or you know someone was sexually assaulted, you're not going to say they were getting F or I was getting F. No, you're not because. That thing is engraved in your brain. You are not going to misuse the word because it was against your will. So therefore, you're not going to say, I was F, I was getting F, or she was getting F. And the fact that she was mocking Adria, she even did the sound effect. Oh, I saw Adria getting F, and she was like, ooh, ooh, drooling, like, ooh. No real victim would do that. No real victim would reenact the sound effect or would reenact a victim being all worded. They would not do that. She thought by saying and doing all these unnecessary things would validate her story, but instead it did the opposite. Come on, psychology 101, less is more. Okay, so then she said Diddy told her to walk around and take pictures, and she did. So you see, she tried to add the real Jane Doe's stuff into her story because in the lawsuit, the real Jane Doe, her pictures, they were all in the studio because that's where it happened. That's where the real Jane Doe was all worded. So you see, she added that into her story. Okay, then she said Diddy asked her, how, what kind of D's does she like? And mind you, she's 10 years old. And she said to Diddy, I like big D's, really big D's, big, big D's. And I'm like, ew, it's the way she said it. Her tone, her face, it was just like, no. And her voice was like, real big D's. I like big D's, a 10 year old saying that like that. Come on. Again, the unnecessary details, unnecessary things that she adds into her story, thinking it's helping, but it's doing the opposite. Okay, so Diddy sent Roger Bonds, his, one of his security guard at the time, to the SEX store to get a big pink SEX toy. It was huge, like 13, 16 inches long, okay? And did he use that on her? And yeah, she kept passing out. And yeah, okay. So next thing she knows, she woke up and she was on the jet. There were a lot of young white girls there. And then next thing, these white girls were gone. And then she was passed around to a lot of white men. And one white man was fat with a hunchback and a pointy nose. She's always saying, when she described the man, it's always a pointy nose. Okay, so they left her hurt in the bathroom floor, and this other white guy came. She said, I want to go home. He's like, I'm going to help you. Now, this white guy, he had a smile like Garfield. He didn't have a pointy nose, but he had a smile like Garfield, okay? Let me add this. Lamisha is or was a prostitute. So it's safe to say a lot of these stories that she's saying being passed around and all that, it could be from her prostitution sessions. A lot of these Johns, these clients, you know, they could be into some sick stuff, torture, 
And maybe she's adding some of these things she went through into this story, this Diddy story, you know, and she had a pimp. She was arrested for prostitution. It's been exposed, okay? So she had a pimp. So what pimps, what do pimps do? They like to punish their, uh, what do you call them? I don't want to say the H word. <laughs> well, whatever. They like to pimp and they like to punish their women, you know, torture them, beat them. So she could be adding a lot of prostitution abuse, her, her prostitution trauma into this Diddy story. Okay, I'm just saying. And the fact that she picked the only Jane Doe that has a picture where their face is hidden, is blurred. That's the one she, she wants to claim. She can't claim the other ones. She can't claim the other victims. She chose the only one with the face covered, but the mistake that she made was she didn't even realize, look, the skin complexions don't match, okay? So she thought she could just come out there and claim a Jane Doe victim because of their face being hidden. But she didn't even look into the details. Like, okay, this girl is a Latina, a Hispanic woman, or could be a white woman. But yeah, she's a dark-skinned woman. And she's heavy set, And she wants to claim this Jane Doe. She wanted to steal this girl identity, this girl's story. This is sick. This is really sick. She could have come out and said she's a victim, and people would have believed her. With no proofs, people would still believe her. She didn't have to go that far as claiming to be this Jane Doe. Talking about how did my pictures get out there? Oh my gosh, how did, how did they get my pictures? Yeah, and another thing too. She has no pictures that resemble this woman in the lawsuit, the real Jane Doe. All of her pictures, she's heavy set. She's dark skinned, okay? And her pictures are like very granny. Even her pictures in 2022, 2023, they still have this old kind of ghetto and low quality to them. And the Jane Doe. Her thing happened in 2009, I believe, in the studio. And her pictures in 2009 are like high quality, clear. And hers, this fake wannabe Jane Doe, Misha's 2023 pictures are all like low quality. And then the Jane Doe's picture in 2009 beats the quality, beats her 2023, 2024 pictures. Make it make sense. Another thing, the real Jane Doe, her thing, her sexual assault happened one time. After that happened, they put her back on the plane and she went home. Okay? So guess what? That means the real Jane Doe have her outfit still. Okay? This fake Jane Doe, Misha, saying this thing went on and on, she went back home when she was 11. Then she went back to Diddy, willingly. She wanted to, and wait till you hear why she went back to Diddy. Oh my goodness. She said two different stories on two different platforms, okay? So Misha, shouldn't Misha have pictures in that DNG tank top? In the skirt, right? Before that studio session? Or did she just have that outfit one time? And just that day, you know what I mean? Just that day, she just had that DNG tank top. Shouldn't she still have that outfit? Or shouldn't she have pictures in that outfit before, you know, this session that she's claiming, this picture that she's pretending to be? Shouldn't she have other pictures in that DNG outfit or similar outfits, you know, pictures of her? No. None of her pictures resembles, matches the, the real Jane Doe's pictures. The body, the, the skin, 
everything. It doesn't match. I bet you the real Jane Doe have still still have her DNG tank top, still have her skirt, or have other pictures in that outfit. I believe that. Because the real Jane Doe said right after the assault, they put her back on the plane and sent her back to Detroit. So it was a one-time thing, okay? So Misha is saying, <laughs> and another thing, the real Jane Doe was 17. In 2009, she was 17, about to be 18. And the same year, she was turning 18, okay? But Misha is saying her thing happened at 10 years old. So, clearly, she didn't think this thing through. How are you stealing this person's identity and taking pieces? And then the most important parts are not adding up. The real victim, the real Jane Doe, is from Canada. And she was living in Detroit. Misha is from Texas. And she lives in Texas. So, you see, she's stealing people's stories bits and pieces it's just too much my goodness okay so then she said she woke up they had her hand over the stove uh, because they wanted her to feel the pain okay the next thing she said she uh, they were little brown kids 30 to 50 brown kids they look black but they didn't speak english they were all in the cage and then one by one they just kept disappearing. The cage had less and less kids as time went by. And then Diddy took a five-year-old and pew, 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 the five-year-old. You know what pew, pew, pew means. So Diddy on a live, the five-year-old with the pew, 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 and then had Misha finish it. Misha took the knife and, you know, with the knife, you know, she did all that with the knife to the five-year-old. Oh my goodness. Again, what real victim, what real victim will go on a YouTuber's platform and say all these things while looking for a lawyer? And keep in mind, the real Jane Doe already have a lawyer. She's represented by Cassie's lawyer. Cassie's lawyer is representing the real Jane Doe with the DNG tank top on, okay? And then she said that um, she remembered there was a tray that had a knife, a corkscrew, a glass bottle, a candle, and a cigar, and Diddy's celebrity friends had to stick them all in her. She said Bill Cosby lit up the cigar and put it out on her below you know her below area jennifer lopez was there with a guy and the guy was looking disgusted jennifer lopez stuck the glass in her after that they put a blindfold on her and beat her she remembered they were all mad at her they were mad at her because she put snake venom in everyone's drink and then she mentioned something about a witch lady gave her the venom and they made her numb physically, but she was conscious. <laughs> um, when they were abusing her on one, in one room, it was a room that was red and had mirrors everywhere and there was a yellow snake in the sink. This lady was talking about the movie Blank Twice. Everything she described was from the movie blank twice okay and guess what she said the movie blank twice was made from her police report <laughs> so the movie was about her her the movie blank twice was made about her okay then she said chris jenner was mad uh, uh, with her was mad about the snake venom and she stabbed Chris Jenner on the left side of her shoulder. Then she said Diddy burned down the building, 
this building to cover up all the evidence and some bodies of the people that were there. He ended up doing something and slip and fell and hit his head. You hear this? She ended up pulling him out. She wanted to let Diddy, D-I-E, in there, but God told her to get him. So she pulled Diddy out of the burning building and ran for the woods. Oh my goodness. And got lost. She got lost in the woods. She made it through this barbed wire fence and found a highway. And she almost got hit by a car because there was a freeway. She collapsed on trash bags and a white man picked her up, drove her from Miami, and took her back to New York. You guys, it get worse. So when she arrived at the police station in New York, was it the police station or was it the hospital? No, the police station. I don't know. She said they were like, who did this to you? And she was like, Diddy did this to me. And they were gonna. Tr they were trying to arrest the white guy who took her and found her, right? She was like, no, no, he didn't do that. He helped me. He helped me. It was Diddy. And then um, she had a seizure and they took her to the hospital. They had to do an operation on her. And that's when they found a huge, the huge pink dildo that Roger Bond went and purchased. Yeah. So they found a huge 13, was it 16 inches? Whatever. 13 inches pink dildo wrapped around her intestine. My goodness. Yeah. So they didn't send her home. They wanted her to heal. So, and then she lied. She said she was 17. Um, what else? Oh, and um, she was still, she was not even in seventh grade yet. She was still in sixth grade, okay? So she was like, what, 10, 11 now at the time. And then she said they had her on this, uh, this table, you know, and they had sushi on her. And you have to look at this picture. She claiming it's her. Another, this lady is like, what, Hawaiian? Pacific Islander? And Misha is saying this is her. This is her as well. Yeah. Okay, so now part two. This guy, this YouTuber actually split the interview into parts to get more views. Okay, calling himself a journalist now all of a sudden. See, that's the thing with these YouTubers. You know, they are YouTubers, and then once they get to a certain amount of a, a subscriber counts, now they are journalists. I don't know. Journalists where? How are you a journalist now because of this interview? What real journalist do you know will sit there and try to get an interview from a liar? Okay. A liar. It's one thing if you didn't know they were a liar. But right from the bat, she, he knew she was lying. The picture alone, her claiming to be Jane Doe alone, should have shut the whole thing down. But no. He interviewed this, this weirdo, right? This liar. And he never questioned her. He allowed her to, to her bad acting. She's... Cry, fake crying through the through the story and then uh, and then speaking in tongues all at the same time it was a mess and a real journalist they will have a following question there were no following questions to her lies to anything he just allowed this girl to just took over the whole interview and just said a lot of freaking crazy stuff. It's not even what she said. It was just the lies. He didn't call out the lies. He didn't question her. He didn't even say anything. She was just talking. She couldn't put together a sentence. It was bad. You know? Talking about he's a journalist. Yeah, sure you are. You're a YouTuber. With that gimmick. You will always be a YouTuber with that gimmick. A journalist. <laughs> Get out of here, please. Okay, now, part two. She's back with her grandmother. 
when she told her grandmother things that he had her doing, like eating people and drinking B-L-O-D, every time she acted bad, her grandmother would say, you should not have ate the people and drank their blood. She said, being poor, she would rather go with the rich people and let them do it to her than her family to do it to her. Whatever that means, yeah. Then he had her grandma's house foreclosure while they were on Section 8. So they had to move to another part in Texas. Then he tried to offer her grandmother money, 75000 but she never took the money. Wait a second, listen to this. Then he had her grandmother's house foreclosure, right? She said. But the grandmother did not want the $75,000 that Diddy offered. What? So they had to move to another part in Texas. So she said Diddy would stay popping up at their house. I mean, her grandmother would tell her to take out the trash and Diddy would be right in the front yard. My gosh, so Diddy didn't have, so Diddy was, had too much time in his hands. Then he would just be popping up. It would be right outside every time she would take out the trash. And then he said, wait, she said her grandmother would tell her to go take out the trash. And then he would be right in the front yard talking about his name is Antonio. And she'd be like, P. Diddy? And he'd be like, no, Antonio. And then she said he would want her to say it just like he did. And then she did it. She did it. In the video, oh my goodness. Then he told her if she ran, he would shoot her. And Roger Bonds was there, she claims. Then he bought her grandmother a car, a 2004 Pontiac. Then he screamed at the grandmother saying, is she in the house? She in the house. And the grandmother saying, no, she not. And her grandmother told her to get in the closet. Okay, then he gave her grandmother the car. And the grandmother was bragging to everybody about how she got a car with zero miles. Zero miles. But this is the same grandmother who did not want to take Diddy's money. She didn't take the $75,000 that Diddy offered her. But she was very happy and bragging about the 2004 Pontiac. Oh my gosh. The grandmother bragging about having a car with no miles. A grandmother. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, so the, she didn't take the money. And Diddy had their house foreclosed, right? But she's happy about the 2004 Pontiac and bragging. It, it just doesn't add up. And after she told her grandmother all these things, all these things Diddy had her doing. And the, the grandmother would taught her about it a 10 year old well 11 year old at the time because she's back home now 11 years old the grandmother kept taunting her you know always reminding her about what she was doing what she did with diddy you know like the eating people and oh my gosh but the grandmother didn't take no money but she was so happy with the pontiac car and bragging about having a car with zero miles. <laughs> it's just, nah, come on. Stop. This is crazy. And then, in 2012, she said people contacted her. And no one questioned her, saying, who, what people? So anyway, so people contacted her, contacted her and told her to come out there. They were going to get R. Kelly first. They told her everybody was suing everybody so she could get her money. And this fake wannabe journalist didn't even question her and say, what? Like, <sighs> this girl was all over the place. Okay, I told you she could not even form a sentence. It was just like broken sentences. It was bad. Oh, my gosh. She said um, they told her they had her grandmother in videos. <laughs> so the grandmother was doing what in the videos? So she was in the freak-offs too? Oh, my God. She said Diddy bought her a house when she was young, but she didn't want to stay with Diddy. 
Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Diddy had her doing illegal things, having her in shootouts with him, having her snitch on people. So Diddy and her was doing shootouts. They were having shootouts. So this girl was gang-banging with Diddy. This is crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? She said she was hooked on the baby oil. She became a fiend. You see how she's using the baby oil into her story? You see how she's adding it in there? She says Sarah, Diddy's baby mama, Chance's mother, told Diddy to keep her off of it when she got pregnant so she could have the baby since she kept losing the babies. Lamisha, Misha, claimed she was pregnant four times for Diddy. Okay? She says Sarah didn't want to go through the surrogate process of them taking the egg out of her and putting it in Lamisha because it hurts so much. She claimed that Chance, she had Chance. After she gave birth, she heard Sarah saying how Chance is ugly. Sarah was saying, I can't say that's my baby. She's ugly. Wow. And the guy that was there was like, shh, she can hear you. She said Sarah took the child so she could have the lifestyle that she have. She said she had a threesome with Diddy and Kim Porter. Diddy had her go by the name of April Fuller. She said, she said Kamora was mad at her when she told her that all the men had S-E-X with her. She said Diddy squirted into her mouth and Kim, Kim, Right there, it turned into a demon, and she did a she did the whole demon face. So it's, Kim literally turned into a demon. Oh my gosh! Doing that threesome, Kim used a, you know what, and from the back had S C X with her, from the back door. Okay, Kim and her was pregnant at the same time. When Kim was pregnant with the twins. Kim had the twins in December 21st, 2006. Uh, so, Lamisha said she was there 2003, 2004, 2005, and she left in 2006. She left in 2006, the beginning of 2006. But Kim had the babies, the twins, in 2006, December. So, Lamisha, I guess, already had... That fourth baby, I don't know. Okay, so then she said, she mentioned Cassie. She said when Cassie was running down the hall in the hotel, Cassie was mad because Cassie had to watch Diddy had S-E-X with her. So she was, mind you, this hotel thing was in 2015. Lamisha was already gone, remember? She was gone in 2006, but for some reason, she was there in the hotel with Diddy the night Diddy beat Cassie in that hallway, okay? And she said there was money in the duffel bag. Mm -hmm. So you see how she add, she take real public stuff and add it into her story, even though she said she was gone way before that, but... Cassie was mad that Diddy was having S-E-X with her. That's why she ran with the money. But Cassie and Diddy, Cassie was being passed around. They were having orgies, threesomes. But for some reason, she was mad because Diddy was having S-E-X with Lamisha. That's why Cassie was mad. But all these years that she was being passed around, she was having orgies, threesomes with men and women and, you know, but Lamisha, but Diddy sexing Lamisha is what pissed Cassie off. I mean, come on. Oh, my goodness. And the video was in, 2000, yeah, in 2016. 2016. It happened. The beatdown. Lamisha left in the beginning of 2006. But she was there in 2016 with Cassie in the freak off. Okay. Oh, my goodness. She said, um, 
Diddy would have sex with her and never let her take baths. And everyone she would, everyone she would have threesomes with would say she freaking stinks. She said Aretha Franklin gave her PCP powder, and she ate it, and things got blurry. She tried to go use the bathroom. Diddy found her, and she told him she had to use the bathroom. But Diddy said he didn't care. And for her to get on the stage, she got on the stage. Diddy demanded her to keep dancing, so she took a she took a ish on everybody. She s h i t on everybody. She was dancing. She claimed she was waving her hand while s h i t on everybody. She said Diddy laughed. Diddy was laughing. Then Diddy pulled her in a room and beat her for ruining his party. She said she always got beat for ruining his parties, so he stopped having her at his parties, and she would only, and he would only have her at the after 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 party. She said after 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 like four times, so there was like an after 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 party. She remembered Denzel saying, "You don't have no respect for nobody." So you see, she uses real stories, and add them into her story. Remember the story that came out, the articles about Denzel in two thousand five, I believe. Denzel、um, scream at Diddy, saying, "You don't have respect for anybody," and then Denzel left with his wife. Okay. So now Lamisha is adding that into her story, saying that when Denzel said that, it's because you know maybe her s h i t probably hit him and his wife, like when she took the s h i t on the stage, it probably went all over him and his wife. That's why he said that. Oh my gosh. This is crazy, and everybody was looking at her like this bee stink. This bee is nasty. They were saying that to her at the party while she was, you know, taking the ish on the stage. Oh my gosh, she claimed Michael Bivin from New Edition was interacting with her while on the table. Remember, this is supposed to be her on the table. She said Diddy had them worshiping her body. Hmm. She said J Lo was at the party and had a baby blue dress on. Well, again, look, she's taking real, real situation, real events, and adding it into her story. J Lo, you see, look at this picture was July second, two thousand, and it was at Diddy's Fourth of July party. Two thousand. <laughs> Lamisha was、uh, okay. <laughs> So this picture of J Lo was when Lamisha took the ish. It doesn't even add up because Denzel saying that line to Diddy was in two thousand five, I believe. But the same party, J Lo had a blue baby blue dress on, but that baby blue dress was from. July second, two thousand. That was a whole different party. You see, because the picture of J Lo just came out, and her ex husband put it out there as well. So again, she tried to add that into her story to make it valid. She said she was scared of J Lo, and they want to be around her. She said she didn't want to name all the stuff that J Lo did to her. Right. She said Diddy had her feeling like she was his girlfriend, so she would talk to J Lo crazy and disrespect her. Oh my goodness! She said she remembers seeing a white guy effing a fish, right? Again, unnecessary details to make. Anyways, so uh. She said when she was on the table, they were torturing her by pouring wax and pinching her. She woke up and everybody freaked out because she didn't have a blindfold on, so they put a blindfold on her. But she already saw a few of their faces. 
she saw Adria getting F. Her word. Her friend Adria was getting F. Not all worded, but F. She was laying there drooling like, ooh. And she did the whole phase, the drooling. Uh huh. Just strange. And then she kept looking down like she had, you no know, notes. You know, her eyes kept looking down like she was reading. Um. Oh my gosh, she said they slept with over 200 people. And then she, add, she added Allie Carter in her mess. She said Allie uh, so-called told her what to do to not be in pain. She said Ray J was there. She said Ashton was there, you see? Mm -hmm. But we know this, though. Erin Carter was there. She said Diddy had a couple of the young celebrities run a train on her from the back door. The next day, she told Justin that they hurt her, Justin Bieber, okay? And Justin was like, you want to hurt them back, don't you? She claimed Diddy told her she was the first person to put the strap on him, you know, yeah. He made her peg him, but she didn't want to. He smacked her, and she sc and screamed, do it. And she said, I'm like, F it. It's either me or you, N-word. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Like, what? You just have to see her her behavior, the, the way she said things. Like, it's either me or you, N-word. Uh-huh. She was like, you did it to me yesterday, so I guess it is you today. Uh-huh. Just the way she said things, just, this just didn't, it just didn't add up. It didn't sound like a victim talking. It didn't. She just sounded rough and cold and just... Huh, she claims since Justin did something to her, Diddy had her doing something to Justin. Justin wasn't on an uh, other man. And Diddy was talking-ish while recording them. And Justin was like, oh, please stop, please stop. Again, she was reenacting what Justin was saying, how he was saying it. Real victims would not do that. They wouldn't do that to another victim because they already, like, they already know the feeling. They would not be like, oh, Justin was like, oh, please, no, oh, I'm sorry. And then, and the fact that she's able to remember these little simple, small things, like, oh, oh, please, no. And, the, and then she was 11, 11. Again, how old was Justin? If she was 11... Then Justin, Justin is a few years younger than her. But didn't Justin, Justin met with Diddy when he was 15, right? Yeah. I mean, I know sometimes we, the public, we might know them at a certain age when they come out. But behind the scenes, these people, before they blew up, these people already been in the, you know, in the back, you know, in the back scenes and already, you know, so I know that. But, okay. But, all right. Okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but Justin is a few years younger than her. Justin is 30, and she's 33. So three years older than Justin. If she was 11, then Justin was 9? 8, 9? Oh, my goodness. She said, um, Diddy, um, yeah, so her mocking Justin is not giving victim, is giving, she's lying. She can't even play the role of a victim. Like she doesn't even know certain things that victims wouldn't even, you know, the trauma. They wouldn't even, you know, mock another victim and even repeat certain things. Like the whole thing the same exact way. Like, oh, nah. It's not giving victim. It's giving she. It's, it's, it's crazy. And then Diddy um, told her to peg people until she squirted i mean he said if you don't squirt you keep going what the heck you can't squirt if you not turned on all right um she said hopefully her boyfriend doesn't leave her because this is her first time telling the story she means her first time telling these lies you see how she adds unnecessary things? Oh, this is, I hope my boyfriend doesn't leave me. 
she think it's making her story sound believable. Instead, it's doing the opposite. This is what I mean. I hope my boyfriend don't leave me. So how are you with this guy? And he don't know all these things that happened to you? She said, uh, she said, the dude don't want to hear no stories. So this guy is dealing with a victim survivor. But he don't want to hear any of her stories. Oh, I'm sorry. Is, you see what I'm saying? This is, uh, this is nonsense. The guy she's with dealt with all these celebrities, all wording her, all this trauma, all these abuse. I mean, so a high level, high level demonic abuse, right? Rituals, right? And this boyfriend of hers don't want to hear anything about it, doesn't know anything. Uh-huh. Again, oh my God. She said she decided to come forward when she heard Damien Williams, the Fed, saying if you had anything to do with this, come forward. She claims she can't get a lawyer to take her case because she doesn't know the time and date since she was so-called D-R-U-G'd, you know. But the thing is, she remembers the moans and the groans of everybody, right? She knew what people, how people were moaning and things like that, but she don't remember the dates. Okay. She remembered the last year she left, she used the word left, okay? She didn't say she ran away, she left, okay? Because she didn't want to breastfeed the baby. So she was not held captive, she wasn't... She was there. Remember, she went back. She went back willingly. So she didn't want to breastfeed the baby. Chance that she had, right? Chance mm -hmm, that she had. Diddy's, Diddy's mama, Janice Combs, she said his auntie. Because they're saying that's his auntie. It's not really his mother. So anyway, Janice Combs came in the room and was milking her like a cow. And she slapped. She said, I slapped that old bee. Oh, my gosh. And her mom was like, oh, you done effed up. She even did the voice. Okay? So, mm -hmm. and told her, she's, <laughs> oh, my God. So she said, you, so Janice was like, oh, you done effed up. And Janice told a big person. I'm guessing a bodyguard. And then, um, so Janice told this big person to put her outside the gates. And she was outside with all the groupies. That's what she said, groupies. She said she was outside with all the groupies that be coming on the damn bus that be trying to get all up in there to get some money. Right. This is a victim talking, okay? She said... She was outside for a couple of days. She remembered knocking on neighbors' doors, and the neighbors would be like, stop knocking on my door. And once again, she did the voice. Again, she reenacted the voice, okay? She's a storyteller. She says she hated herself because she left behind her baby. She said she was taking this long walk. A homeless person gave her their sandals and then she started freaking out fake crying and this fake sound crying sound she was doing and speaking in so-called tongues and it lasted like five seconds no lie just like that it was just like <laughs> oh my goodness she said when she got to the police somebody picked her up and told her to say river bond gave her everything and it was jean deal she called jean she called Jean, and Jean pretended to act like he didn't know her and that she's crazy. Jean gave her some paperwork and some of her pictures, and she gave it to the Vegas police. You see how she's adding Jean into this? Oh, I don't know. It just did not make sense. Um, and then she said 
the police drove her back to Diddy's house. Diddy and his mom was arguing about her putting her, you know, putting Lamisha out the gate, outside the gate. And Sarah was claiming it was her baby. And Lamisha was saying, no, it's her baby. And Sarah finally admitted that she didn't have a baby, that Lamisha had the baby. Wow. This is in front of the police, okay? I mean, right outside, not even inside the house. Diddy started going crazy. He opened a bag and said he had half a million dollars and said, here you go, and gave the police the money. Diddy then asked her to come in, but she said she just want her baby. Diddy said, if you come in, you get the baby. She then turned to the officer and asked, are you going to come back and check on me tomorrow to see if I'm alive and if I'm okay? The officer said, no. What? And then he had this look on his face like, yeah, you know you done effed up. And guess what? She did the face. In the video, she did the face. This girl is a storyteller. This is not a victim. What victim have time to reenact voices, how they said things, and other victims saying this, moaning, you know? So now then he turned to the camera, to the guy, and like... Yeah, you know you done effed up. Oh my God, it's this is a. Ugh. All right, so she said, "I'm not going. I'm not going in there." Just like that, her voice did not like it. Just she doesn't. Have the, oh my God, you have to hear her talk to like to understand. And both the police and Diddy was trying to convince her to go in there, to go inside. Mm-hmm. Diddy then pulled out a glass bottle and said, she just want this. Give her this. This is what she really wants. The bottle had ketamine and liquid ecstasy. You see? <laughs> you see how she tried to throw in the, the stuff that's being put out there into her story? He said, she said he was like, I guess the police. He was like, you know it's against the law to, to be giving me this. Are you trying to bribe me? And then he was like, come on, baby, you killing me. You can't take all the money I got. That's everything I got in the bag. Again, she did this voice. So I guess that's that was Diddy's voice that she did. Next thing she know, the police officer had her in the back seat, higher than a MF. She says she's inside the mental hospital. She think Roseanne is the one, Roseanne Barr, okay? Roseanne is the one that helped her out. Roseanne was a patient in the mental hospital. <laughs> she told her she's going to help her and she's going to get her lawyers to help her. And that's what helped Misha. Wow. And then she was just like, uh, she was grinning with her mouth open the whole time. My gosh. She said, um, Diddy's lawyer, Mark Agnifilo, came with a fake paper that said that she was 17 and had her sign the paper and she couldn't talk about the baby. She said she got transferred to the Garland, Garland police station and her grandma had to pick her up from the police station. Diddy's lawyer... Ma Mark Agnifilo shoot her up in her neck. So he had this needle and he, yeah, he gave her a shot in her neck. My goodness. She said he would unalive people for a ditty. Mark Agnifilo <laughs> would unalive people for a ditty. Oh my gosh. She said Mark called her in 2012 and got videos of her auditioning and got these, she said holes, and got these holes put up in a safe. Oh my gosh. The female judge on the case in 2012 was calling her too. So the judge, I don't know, they said the mob was going to look out for her. The guy Courtney Burgess, who claimed he got Diddy freak off tapes, called her and told her all the bank people are there that she should come live here and she said if he said if they send you food do not eat it 
She said she gave the box to this lady downstairs and ended up, the lady ended up catching pneumonia. You see? Pneumonia. Ken Porter died of pneumonia. You see, like, ah, she said she ended up catching a cold, the lady. She was throwing the food out, the food that, I guess, Diddy and them were sending her. And this lady was like, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> and she gave it to the lady. And the, the lady had pneumonia from eating the food. Yeah. Just like Kim had pneumonia and died from pneumonia. This is sick. She says she remembers Jaguar and Jane Dill coming up the club and they ask her if she snitched and everybody telling her to come testify. She said, Jada case from the locks. Diddy used her as an escort to sleep with Jada Kiss and gave her a champagne bottle to give to Jada Kiss and had to had her strap him down, meaning peg him. And the locks jumped her with some friends. They all beat her. She said she'll never forget that ASS whooping while she was laughing. She's laughing about getting jumped and beat up, like beat up bad by men. This interview was terrible. And the thing is, too, he edited the video with suspenseful sound effects. This is a victim story, supposedly, right? He added, like, you know when you watch a movie, a suspense movie, and it was like, ding, 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 like when, oh my gosh, it was bad, bad editing. This guy didn't even take this lady's story seriously. He added suspense music. It was bad editing. Why add all these unnecessary things to someone that's telling you about their trauma, what they so-called went through? Right? He knew she was lying, yet he gave her a platform to tell blatant lies. Like, remember, no real victim in this dirty situation is going on any YouTuber's platform. Okay? Why would they? When they can go to big media platforms, television platforms. And they have a case going. So why would they jeopardize their case and talk to a freaking YouTuber? Come on. You can't be this hard up for views and money that you really put this blatant liar on your platform. And he made this interview. He turned this interview into three parts. Really? You should be ashamed of yourself. This was a mess. This lady is not even a real dirty victim. Too many lies. And you know they lies. And yet, oh, and guess what? He's managing them. Adria English put it out there. He's her manager. Well, guess what? She made a post. Okay, so they went on live. They went on live, all three of them. This guy, this YouTuber, Adria and Misha. And Adria was acting ridiculous. She was singing when Misha was telling her some story. And then the YouTuber dropped her, kicked her off the live. Was like, you know. So, and this is her manager. Okay, so these people are a mess. It's a ghetto mess. So, right after... He dropped her off the live because she was just, like, ridiculous. Okay? Adria, they're saying that she's a DRUG abuser, a substance abuser. She's on some stuff. Yeah, because, anyway. So, right after she was dropped off the live, she dropped him as a manager. She made a post, right, on her social media. She said... <laughs> This is to acknowledge that I am terminating our management agreement today, November 26, 2024. Oh, wow. So, yeah, this is, this is crazy. This is crazy. These people are ridiculous. You know, they are looking for money. 
they have gotten money, they have received money, they are they put their cash up on these platforms. And another thing I don't understand. I don't understand how these people they do these interviews. They don't pay these people. They don't pay the 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 person, the guest. They want you guys to pay the guest, then they'll have their cash up. So when this when these people turn out to be frauds, to be fakes, guess what? Guess who lose their money? The public, the audience. I never understand that. Okay, you don't even give your guests any money, but you want the public to come out of pockets and pay these people and come out of pocket and pay your guests. And then when it, when it turns out that these people, you know, are scammers, and guess what? You're good. You got the views. You got the money from the views. You didn't pay anything. And then it's the, the, the viewers who lost money in the scam. So this is why I don't understand this whole, yeah, I'm going to put that cash up up. No. They're your guests. You pay them. You pay them. Your viewers, your subscribers, your viewers should not have to come out of pocket for your guests. They are your guests. You are getting a check from the views. You're not sharing your check with the viewers. So why should the viewers cash app these people, these scams? It's a scam. So I don't, I don't know. I, just, I don't trust platforms that have people's cash app for the viewers to to pay them. No, you do it. They're your guests. You pay them. Okay? I just don't get it. Okay, so she went on another platform, Natanya's platform, the lady who did he shot in the face. I didn't know she had a platform. And uh, so one of her videos was recommended to me showed up on my timeline so i was like okay let me watch this it was the lamisha's uh interview so i clicked right and the way natanya do her interviews is really nice it's it's nice her interview style is nice really nice um so two things well a few things you know stood out to me but i'm going to point out these two things because Misha said she met Jagua at a nightclub in 2012 but when Jagua came on the platform she was starstruck and okay so she was starstruck when Jagua came on the platform Lamisha acted well she's an actress she acted like she was starstruck she was like oh my gosh oh my um you know and that was weird because i mean jagua is you know she's a singer and but why be starstruck when you were amongst like high level celebrities i'm talking about you know a-listers high profile people so coming from that, coming from that world, and now you meeting Jaguar, like how are you star starstruck when you were just with high profile A listers? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't like how do you and then even if it was somebody bigger than Jaguar why would you still be starstruck because you know how these from 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 where you've come knowing how they really get down and what you've been through what you went through how would you be starstruck by anyone anymore because you experience the evil you know how these people are so you would the last thing you would be is starstruck by anyone anymore because you actually was in that world. You rubbed shoulders. You were abused. You were tortured by these people. But yet, you are starstruck by a low level. You know, no disrespect. I'm just saying. 
compared to these people, Jaguar is not like a household name. She's now known, you know, for like her YouTube things, you know, talking on YouTube, you know, and yeah. So that's when I'm like, okay, you went in their world, Misha, you know, but yet you still start struck by celebrities. <laughs> that's the last thing. Like if I'm, if they, you know, if I experience all of that, if I see a celebrity, I wouldn't feel anything for them because number one, they all, they all human, you know, but what you went through, you wouldn't be a, 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 st- a fan of any of them anymore. You know, so I didn't get this whole, oh my gosh, wow, like, you know, like, it's, it just, it didn't make sense. Think about it, it didn't make sense. You were rubbing shoulders, you were in Diddy's world. All these A-listers, Cosby, she named Cosby, uh, all these people, Ashton Kutcher, you name it. She was there with these people, but yet she's starstruck by Jaguar on YouTube. Oh my goodness. And someone she claimed she met in 2012, but she's starstruck by them on YouTube all of a sudden. <laughs> this is crazy. Another thing, she, um, I'm gonna play the clip, but what she said did not give victim. It didn't give victim. She sounded like the majority of the people on the outside looking in. She said, she said, Diddy thought he was better than the white man. You know better than the white man. Ha ha, Negro, sit your little monkey behind down. Does this sound like a victim talking? Does this sound like someone that was on the inside going through all these things? Ha ha, Negro, sit your little monkey behind down. That sound like a victim to you guys? <laughs> really? Let me play the clip for you guys. They gave him ammo to get away with the law. Exactly. He was, the word that they use is emboldened. It made yeah. him cocky. I'm a guy. He thought he was better than a white man. That's where he messed up. <laughs> Nigga. Yeah, well, they showed him. Yep. You ain't better than nothing. Sit that little monkey self down. Mm-hmm. I thought he would never be in the diet. The lion's dead. Oh, you in the lion's dead. Okay, did that sound like someone that was near Diddy? Ha ha, Negro, sit your little monkey behind down. Does that sound like someone that was near Diddy? Ha ha, Negro, you thought you were better than the white man. Sit your sorry monkey self down. This is a language of of a victim. Really, (laughs) it's not giving that. It's the things that people are missing people are not seeing and i'm pointing these things out you know it's the small things it's like no the things that she say the behavior the mocking of the victim and you know and she don't remember the days and all these things important things but she remembers the moans the groans of these people she can tell you their facial expressions, how they were drooling, you know, she was mocking them, but she don't remember the dates and everything. And she said that uh, Diddy would take her out in the public. Mm-hmm. So, right, but there are no pictures of her and Diddy out in public. Yeah, so check out this clip where she's like, it's kind of disturbing. Okay. Made it. You hear me? You made want to be like, I did it. I didn't want to be like, Sometimes you got to pop out and show them, girl. Right. I didn't have the bomb behind me, but I made it. So you see? Na 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 like this is not the action of a victim like it's not giving victim like who like na 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 like 
I made it. No, 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 no. I know about victims. They're not acting like this. Look, look. This is not the actions of a victim. Some of you need discernment. You guys have eyes to see and ears to hear. So do that. See and hear. Look at the action. Hear what they are saying. It's not adding up. It's not adding up. The behavior is not adding up. The things that she's saying are not adding up. Just a lot of nonsense. Now, in this clip, they ask her how old she was and what happened when she went back. She was like, he was shocked when I went back. Really? Check out the clip. And how old were you when you went back? I was 13. What happened the day you came back? He was like shocked that I came back. And I was like, you don't remember me? You remember me? And he acted like he did not remember me. But he told me that he was supposed to kill me. The day you came back? He was like shocked that I came back. You see? He was shocked when I went back. Really? You could see the lies all in her face. Like, who answered? Like, he was shocked when I went back. No. It's giving lies. It's giving... It's not giving honesty at all. And the fact that she was able to just walk out and leave when she was 11 and then went back at 13 because Diddy was shot when she went back. Come on. Yeah, so they just let her in like that. And Diddy was just so shocked. He's just like, okay, welcome back. And <laughs> Come on. Oh, and she hitchhiked with people she didn't know all the way to New York to get back to Diddy. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, now this clip, she said... Even Beyonce stole her eggs. Now, she stopped short before she said Beyonce's name, but she was speaking about Beyonce because she said the person where nobody can say their name, her name is Beyonce. Because they, they, they took eggs. I know they took eggs. They was dishing out my eggs to people. They took my eggs. Um... I I I, I, can't, I can't say their name because uh, they got they got it to where you can't say their names. But that person that got it to where can't nobody say her name. She had my eggs too. I was gonna say so early. You said you managed to get away when you was eleven. How did they get you back? I ran the way back to him. I met this lady. She used to be a model in the model industry. She's on drugs now. Um, she was on drugs then. And I, she was saying she was a model, and I was telling her I wanted to go back. Like, I rode the bus, and I was like, I'm trying to get back to P. Diddy. You know how to get to New York. And, like, I, that's how I got back. We hitchhiked. I hitchhiked with people I didn't know, and they got me back to New York. So remember when Jaguar did the interview on Pierce Morgan, and when she said Beyonce and all that, yeah, that's what they had to shut that part down. So that's what she's speaking about. Oh man, so it was Blue Ivy, her daughter too? And the twins? Oh wow. So let me get this straight. So Misha gave birth to Chance Combs, Diddy's daughter, and now she could possibly be Blue Ivy's mother. And the twins, Rumi and Sir Carter. Wow. Okay, now in this clip, she said, with the whole blip twice the movie, Misha didn't want no parts of it, but she gave them the okay. She gave them the go to make the movie because it is based on her life. They asked me about blink twice. I told them I didn't want no parts, but y'all can make a movie so it could be awareness.
I didn't say I sat down and I came up with the, I said that they came from my police report. I never said I helped write Blink twice. I just said it was based off my police report. Right. Moving on. Misha always rubbing her eyes. You know, it's because she has on these cheap uh, eyelashes, these clownish eyelashes, and they are irritating her eyes. That's why she's using that, like, she's, you know, she's, like, crying and all that rubbing. No, there are no tears. If you zoom in, you will see there are no wet spots on her face when she does that. No, she's not crying. She's not crying. This is sick. And she spent most of the interview fixing those ridiculous cheap eyelashes the entire time. That was her focus. When Jack Black got on that interview, man, <laughs> it was crazy. Misha spent the entire time fixing those cheap, ridiculous eyelashes. It <laughs> The entire time, that was her focus. Even when the subject was about what Jaguar was saying, um, some, you know, what happened to her and her, you know, and Misha was just like, fixing those stupid, cheap glue. Nah, oh my gosh. So yeah, if you zoom in every time she's like, those fake cries, like the sound that she makes, you know, no, there are no tears. Her face is not wet. Nowhere on her face is wet when she does that. This is sick. Okay, I'm not even going to touch on Jack West's part in this situation because this video is already long. So I will have to save that for another video because, yeah. But Misha, so now Adria is discrediting Misha's story. <laughs> when I tell you this thing is so ridiculous that these people are giving these these two liars a platform. This is crazy. This is crazy. Adria is turning on Misha and she's the one that brought Misha out. <laughs> oh, and Misha even trying to throw Jaguar in her story. She said Jaguar was there. <laughs> she said Jaguar was there and Jaguar was helping. <laughs> and Jaguar was like, when did I help you? When was this? And she was like, okay, okay, I don't know you. Like everybody always talking about, they don't know me. They don't want me to say that. I know them. Oh man, it was a mess. It was a mess. And then, in this clip, when Jack was told her that Diddy Bell was denied, prostrating everything that happened to you before a group and a pit of vultures is not helping you. It's not, but it happened to now me. And I've been shut up all my life. That brought you I've been online. shut up all my life. They've been telling me to shut up. The woman that brought you online is now contradicting everything you're saying. She That's her. She fired Lionel, and now you're being represented by him. There are conflicts of interest in this thing out the wazoo. Please stop this now. Adria has said things that she's witnessed about drug use regarding you. Tonight is based off of her memories. I remember it was like uh, something. It was something like where you could get dressed behind it. I remember stuff. So, <laughs> I never said when, you hurt nobody. I said you help. That's what I told her. I told her that you were help. When, when did I help you? <laughs> I don't know you, ma'am. I this is the well, problem. You can't that say that's the narrative. Everybody gonna say they don't know me. Okay, I don't no, know no, you. No, 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 Jaguar. And I apologize I for even bringing me. your name up. I apologize I, for even bringing your name up. I don't know you. Let me.
Let me just let me just interject. I'm going to need let me, you to produce me, evidence of something. Yeah, let me something let me. Real. Only once, no, once I, I get into it. Once I, I, I get to say something for one moment without interrupting. I will. I will. My only evidence is that police report that Alec has, and she gave it to the insurance people to keep it. And for my the court. name so is what, involved in that somehow. But what? So whenever I get in contact with her. Cause I, cause you witnessed stuff, so you are on it from for witnessing I witnessed stuff. What? What did you witness? Right. No, just I'm I don't know. I, I, need, listen, I, I don't want to keep know. talking about it. We, I'll give you my number. We can talk off the line. Yeah. I, don't... I need proof other than I need proof. So I just need. You I guess me. I need more proof. But I mean. And that Her reaction, her acting was so bad. You guys have to see this, okay? She went, oh my gosh, it was so bad. She's like, this girl can cry on cue. Well, fake cry on cue, okay? She's like, justice, justice feel good to me. Justice feel good to me. Like that. She went in and out of her crying. Justice, justice feel good to me. Justice feel good to me. What? He haven't been found guilty. What justice? The victims didn't get any justice yet. The guy is just not going to be out until his trial, but he said he was going to, you know, try again to get bail. Okay? His trial starts in May, May 2025. So there's no justice yet. So yeah, her reaction to that was crazy. You see how she just go in and out of her fake cry? Who does? I don't want him to get on no bond. Uh, even if I don't press charges or try to sue him, because it's not about the money. You like should I could be rejoicing now, honey, because guess what? He got denied. <laughs> He's not getting out. <laughs> you know? And it feels good. Justice, justice feel good to me. Like justice feels so good to me because I've been through some. Who goes in and out of crying just like that? Like right on cue. And then here's the kicker. When she called down in New York, she said, whatever that means. When she called down in New York, I guess the, the police department. They told her someone already said that's them that is sitting on Diddy's lap, the DNG girl, and that Misha cannot say that's her. She can only say that she's the girl on the table. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's make it make sense because... Story. And when I called down to New York, somebody is saying that that's them on his lap. So they said, I can't say this me on the lap. I can only say this me on the table. So. No, 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 no. Hold on. So she called in into the police station in New York. They told her someone already said that it's them. So you cannot say that it's you. You can't say that you are the girl on the table. That doesn't make sense because only in the lawsuit that the girl picture on face is blurry. But the actual picture is not blurry. So they can so how can they say you can't say that it's you if it's really you? You do know the the picture was just scanned. They were scanned into the documents. That's it. And then they put the blur over the picture because they want to keep her they want to keep the real Jane Doe anonymous they don't want anyone to know who she is so but the original picture the you should still have it the whoever the police you you should still have it without any blur on the face the face it was only blurred because it was in the document and the picture was scanned scanned so the original picture it doesn't have the blur, okay? So if this you, that can easily be proven because the original picture doesn't have any blur on the face. 
for what they're telling you that somebody else already claiming to be them. So you cannot be you now. You gotta be this one on the table. Are you freaking kidding me? So now, Misha is saying, pretty much is saying, the real Jane Doe from Detroit is claiming to be her. Well, using her pictures. And she cannot use her pictures because the Detroit Jane Doe is using it. <laughs> Oh my god, so now she got to be this person on the table. And she's claiming to be both. But now, oh my gosh, this is not real. This is... Okay, you know what? I'm going to play the clips for you guys. And um, I almost forget. Misha posted this on her Instagram in 2022. December 17, 2022. And it's De Leon. This is the brand that Diddy was a spokesperson for. And what does Misha wrote on it, on this image? Let's see what's the hype about. This was in 2022. So you've been around Diddy, right? And then, cause, because she said she left in 2005, right? But then she said she was at the freak off with um with Cassie and Diddy. That's why Cassie was mad because Cassie was watching Diddy have S E X with her. But I noticed that in the Sean Atwood uh interview, Misha doesn't add the part that you know Diddy was having S E X with her. She just said Cassie was watching Diddy having SEX and she got mad. So you see how she left herself out of it? But on the other YouTubers platform, the first interview, she said it's because Cassie was watching her, watching Diddy having SEX with her and Cassie got mad. But she left that part out, the interview, this interview. But, okay, so that means if she... Her first thing she said on that other interview, Cassie was mad because of her and Diddy. Misha and Diddy was having SEX. And that clip was the same clip that Diddy beat Cassie up. And that was in 2016. So if Misha was there, right? Because she want to add herself in there now. So she never tried Diddy on. And that's what Diddy was promoting. That's what Diddy was in partnership with. Okay, fine. Let's just say, okay, for some, whatever reason, she never tried Diddy on. Okay, but she was drinking when she was, you know, okay. But why would you even want to try it now? After all, after all that you've been through, after everything he this guy, this monster has done to you and everyone else, why even care what this you know let's see what this what this what the hype is about why would you even care i wouldn't even want anything to do with it i wouldn't even want to taste any you know what i mean but now you want to see what the hype is about because you've never had it and but you care to have it in 2022 when that brand and diddy are connected because that's you know they were in partnership yeah I don't get it. I, I, this is what I'm saying. These are the things that these lawyers will... This, these are red flags. These are red flags. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. Misha is a victim of molestation because she said she was molested by family members on her dad's side. When she was really, really young, and she was doing things with her cousins. So she's a victim of that. But a victim of D? No. Mm -mm. If she were to come out and say, yeah, you know, this happened to me, we would have believed her. But because she's saying that she is Jane Doe and this is her, that's, what, that's when it was like, okay, if you could lie about being 
this person that's obviously not you, then that means everything else you're saying is a lie. Now, the things that she's saying have happened, are happening to real victims. Because I don't know if you guys know, there are millions, millions of videos of real victims who've been through all these things. SRA. Like they were born into the bloodline where it's it's really deep. It's dark and it's deep. Okay? They're not focusing on, you know, celebrity this. I mean, even though they were passed around to celebrities and poli politicians, you know, governments. Like it's it's really, really deep. But these people, these victims are real. Real victims. Real stories. You know? So, if you guys want, I can post some real, real victims with these type of stories on my community section. You know, let me know. Because this, what she's saying is nothing new. It's just that I don't believe that she experienced all that, what she's saying. I don't believe that she's a victim of Diddy. I believe Adria put her up to it, and now it's backfiring because Adria is not even stable herself. She's not stable. So two unstable people, uh, yeah, duh, it's going to crumble. Things are going to backfire because they're both not stable, and they're both looking for money and fame. Because they're like, I'm famous now. Michelle's like, I'm famous now. I'm well known. So I'm like, famous? You know, so, I don't know. But this is, you know, anyway, listen. I don't know if I should do a second video because this is, like, long. Um, but I do want to read the email because I did contact Cassie's lawyer, the real Jane Doe's lawyer, Douglas Whitdoor. I did. I did. And I want to read you guys the email and as you can see november 27 2024 at 8 51 a.m eastern time request for clarification on false claims regarding representation dear mr wigdor my name is maria and i run a youtube platform maria daily tv where I provide commentary and analysis on trending topics. Recently, I came across a situation involving two women claiming to be victims of Sean Combs, which I believe warrants your attention. One of these women, Adria English, filed a lawsuit against Mr. Combs, but was reportedly dropped as a client by her attorney, Ariel Mitchell Kidd. Since then, she has been speaking on various YouTube platforms, bringing another individual into the narrative. The second woman, Lamisha Fuller, is from Texas and claims to be Jane Doe from Detroit, the same Jane Doe you are currently representing. Miss Fuller has been sharing fabricated stories, allegedly taking details from real victims and even a movie called Blank Twice and passing them off as her own. She has appeared on YouTube channels where her, where her claims are being used for views, misleading audiences, and soliciting money via Cash App under false pretenses. I believe this behavior could potentially be illegal and harmful to the integrity of genuine victim advocacy. As a supporter of true victims and an advocate against human trafficking, I find this deeply concerning. To prevent further misinformation and harm, I kindly request that you issue a statement clarifying whether Ms. Fuller is indeed your client. Such a statement would help dispel confusion and protect the reputation of your office and the real Jane Doe. For your reference, I have included links to relevant videos and materials below. 
please let me know if there's any additional information you may need from me. Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Sincerely, Maria, and I left the links. Okay, as you can see, Wednesday, 8.51 a.m. Eastern. So, because it was pre-Thanksgiving day, it's a holiday. So, he yeah, have not replied. And when he replied, we'll see. Um, he doesn't even need to reply to me. He could just, like I said, he could just make a statement publicly to, you know, TMZ. Um, yeah. That would be great. And I also contacted Allie Carter. Okay, I did as well. You know what? I'm going to make another video. And, you know, I've been a supporter of Allie for years. Before she was a trending topic on YouTube now. Ever since the Diddy situation, everybody's jumping on the Allie Carter's bandwagon. But I've been following her, her stories uh, for years. I've been following her on Instagram, okay? So, this is nothing new. Um, but yeah, I contacted Ali. Yeah, I'm going to make another video because this is getting long. Um, but yeah, but Lamisha and, you know, these content creators, these YouTubers, they should be ashamed of themselves, giving platforms to unstable people like Adria and Lamisha. And it's, it's illegal. It's illegal, Lamisha, what you are doing. You are lying. You are pretending to be another person. Okay? And, yeah. So, we're going to see what's going to happen to these two. Especially Lamisha, because something's not right with this person. If you're a victim, come out and say you're a victim. But there's no need for all these extra lies and then you are pretending to be someone else you are stealing someone else's identity their pictures this is wrong you need to really cut it out before you get yourself in major major deep waters because I got her recording a minute in. I got recorded. See, everybody playing chess, think I'm playing checkers. I got her recorded. I got her recorded of our con I record our conversations. So she can discredit me all she wants. She's recorded. Well, girl, I know, but we're gonna show, tell the people. The people don't need to know this. The people don't need to know this. The people don't need to know this. We're just gonna put this narrative up. She did this, not me. I told her, don't talk about me. Because I need a lawyer. Um Diddy was telling me to kill one of the babies and I said no and he shot the babies he shot the baby they had to be no more than five or six he shot that baby he like pop, 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 pop. and he told me to pick up the knife I thought he was going to kill me so I picked up the knife and I was just just the body of the baby and uh you say you, you have to do these things for each other does that mean that like you guys were enemies or were you able to make friends with Justin I mean, they would just use me as um, uh, like a bucket. They would just, he would just use me as a bucket, even his sons. If God can take me down, like God can strike me down, even his sons, Justin and um, King. Quincy was there too, but he would use me as a bucket. And other young artists, I haven't named their names, but they would use me as a bucket. If I recall, I remember them having to hold his arms. Quincy had to record. We were all underage. He drugged them. He always keep us drugged. This is wrong, what you are doing. Okay? So, I will, um, I will end this here because this is long. But you guys, I did point out all the lies. Okay? And I'm sure there's more. She's, she's still doing interviews, maybe. Um, but yeah, so I point out all the lies and I showed you guys the, the BS, okay, and the facts. So yeah, you guys, so thank you for tuning in. Um, leave your thoughts in the comments. And um, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.